I'm Allison. This is Wonder Crochet. If you're new here, I talk all things crochet, amigurumi, do tutorials, and other fun videos. So if you'd like to learn how to crochet amigurumi, I have a full online course linked in the description. It teaches you from the very beginning how to crochet cute plushies like these. So today, this is actually one of my most requested videos, is to talk about my pattern designing process, how I design crochet patterns, how I start it, go about it. So if you're interested in that, leave a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe. So let's jump in. So to go through my pattern designing process, I thought we would focus on this crab pattern that I just designed. This pattern is coming out on Tuesday, so depending on when you watch this, it may or may not be out yet. But this is a no sew pattern, so there's no sewing required. And to be quite honest, for me, designing no sew patterns is the most difficult. And that's because all of the elements that you see here are all crocheted on and not sewn on. So it's a little bit difficult to describe in the pattern how exactly to do that. And I can't tell you how many times I have to frog these projects whenever I start. <laughs> so to start the pattern designing process is obviously the inspiration. That's our first step. How did I think of this plush? What inspired me to make it? And I'll show you because it's because it's very random. So when designing patterns, the inspiration can come from anywhere. It can come from a TV show or maybe a plush you saw in store or just something that you came up with in your head. I just always make sure that the inspiration for the pattern isn't from something that someone else crocheted because I try to steer away from creating something similar to someone else as best as I can. I know how difficult that is and I know that that's a huge issue in the crochet world and in any type of creative field because there are so many patterns out there. So making sure that you are creating something a little bit different is the most important part. So I was actually inspired to make this crab plush because I was playing Roblox for the first time. <laughs> And I was in the marketplace, I think it's called, where you go and you buy different clothes and accessories for your character. And I saw this crab <laughs> in the accessories. And the biggest thing for me was that it was sitting and it wasn't a laying crab. And I hadn't seen any crochet crabs that were sitting before. If you've followed my other patterns, you know that I love to make animals that are sitting because I think it's so cute. So the first thing I did after I saw this was I went and looked on Etsy, Ribbler, Instagram, Google. I looked for as many crochet crab patterns as I could find to make sure that no one else had made something that looks like this. And obviously there are a ton of crab crochet patterns. There's even no so crab crochet patterns, but I knew that I wanted to make it sitting and that was what differentiated mine from the others. So once I saw that it didn't exist, or at least I, I couldn't find it if it did exist, I knew that I wanted to make it. So we have our inspiration phase, which is number one, our research phase, which is number two, and then number three will be the prototype phase or sketching it out. And I like to do this phase on my iPad. You can do this with pencil and paper. This is actually my favorite phase of pattern designing because you get to sketch out kind of what's in your head and put it down and start to make it real, which is really fun for me. So I use the app Procreate and I use my Apple Pencil. And what I do is I look for other inspiration, like the picture that I found on Roblox. I'll pop the picture on the screen here. Basically, I'll sketch it out, uh, an idea of how I want to make it. And as you can see, I had two different versions. So I have the version that is the all one color, which is what I went for. And then you have the one that has the different color belly, which I think would still look cute, but I knew I wanted to make it as easy as possible because I teach others how to crochet and those people are beginners. So I like to have patterns that beginners can follow right after they finish my course. And this is one of them. So as you can see, I sketch it out and I put little notes on it. So for this one, I wasn't sure if I wanted to start from the middle or start from the top. And this is just kind of something that you figure out in the stage where you actually start to make it. So for me, since I've been designing patterns for about three years now, I know in my head the shapes that I need to make to make certain animals and to make things look the way that I want them to. But if you're new to this, if you're a beginner, practice. Practice as much as you can. Follow other people's patterns and see what makes certain shapes. Practice a lot on your own. Frog it a lot. That's just the biggest thing. So to be ready to create a new pattern, it does take time. 
So don't think that you need to jump into it. It's actually better if you don't and you wait and you practice as much as you can and you enjoy it before you really jump into pattern designing. So now we're on to stage four, which are the materials. So deciding what size yarn you want to use, what size hook, everything like that. For me, I use a lot of Premier Parfait Chunky yarn. You know that if you follow me, I never stop talking about it. I like how it makes things a little bit smaller. If you use a chenille yarn like Sweet Snuggles Light, it's going to be a little bit bigger than this. If you use Burnett Blanket, it's going to be even bigger. And then if you use like the size 7 jumbo yarns like Sweet Snuggles or Parfait XL, those are going to be pretty large. For me, I actually started pattern designing with size 4 medium. This is worsted weight yarn. I found that it was the easiest to work with as I started out as a beginner. It was the easiest to design with. And what's nice is most patterns do translate from one yarn to the other. And although I do work with chenille yarn, I have found that the bulk of crocheters actually work with medium yarn because it is the easiest to find and the most accessible. So our next phase is actually designing the pattern and this is step number five and this is where you actually grab your hook and your materials and you start designing. So making sure that you write down every single step that you do and you take pictures of every step that you do is so important. You'll thank yourself later when you're actually writing the pattern up that you took a lot of notes, that you took a lot of pictures so that you don't have to go back multiple times. And then when once you've actually designed your pattern, whether you've written it down or typed it up, stage six is putting it into a document that is clean and detailed and easy for others to understand. Personally, I use Canva to design all of my patterns. I'll put a link in the description. This isn't sponsored by them. I'm not big enough on YouTube to get sponsored by them, but I've been using Canva since the beginning and it's free to use. There are premium features if you want to purchase that, but it's really nice starting out and you can make some really beautiful designs. I will say if you are designing patterns to keep the design simple or to have a printer friendly version, because there are people who love to physically print out their patterns and using a ton of printer ink is just not ideal. So you wanna make sure you either keep the designs and the pictures simple or have a printer friendly version, your choice. And then once you put your pattern into an organized fashion, into one document, having all your pictures in there, you move on to testing. Having others test your pattern is crucial. And I say this as someone who, who has designed over a hundred crochet patterns. I cannot put one out there that I haven't had tested by others. So basically you ask other crocheters if they would be interested in testing your pattern. And the crochet community is so kind and so helpful that lots of people apply to test your pattern. And I think that's one of the coolest things is that we help each other out in designing patterns. Obviously you give them the pattern for free. If you want to give them any other patterns from your shop for free, you can do that as well. But basically your testers will go through your pattern. They'll look for spelling errors, counting errors, make anything more clear in your pattern and just making sure that it all works up nicely and makes sense. Personally, I love pattern testing. I love helping out other crocheters. And it's such a crucial thing to my business for other people to test my pattern. So I love you all. I appreciate you all so much. But if you're brand new, post your tester call on Instagram. Use some of these hashtags as well. And you'll start to get people interested in your pattern. And after your pattern has been tested and edited and you make sure that everything works out exactly how you want it to, then your pattern is ready to release and to market it. Which I'll save for a whole other video if you all are interested. As you know, marketing is my background. I was a marketing director for many years before I went full-time in crochet. So that really excites me. I'd love to talk about it more. But these are the steps that I use to create and design my patterns. I hope that gives you a little bit of a better idea of what it's like to design a pattern, especially if you're an aspiring pattern designer. But as I said, don't feel like you have to jump into anything. So take your time researching, designing, and testing so that others can really understand your pattern and enjoy it as much as you do. I hope you enjoyed this style of video. Comment down below what you want to see next. And as always, Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you real soon.